Welcome to part six of the basic peacekeepers training. Uh, today, Mark, we're going to talk about legal governance uh, and more specifically the Bill of Rights. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been talking so far about using the word lawful and law a lot. Uh, the Bill of Rights is the source of authority of those governing today. And it's been written down in 1688. And this is the legal authority of those governing today. So when we talked about the lawful governance, we talked about the source being the successors of the people that created the Bill of Rights. So <clears throat> we'll be looking at specifically the application of the natural rights which we talked about in the first session and um, which was uh, uh, the one of the reasons for removing the previous government because that was not fit for purpose we'll see that this is a contract so it's an offer to contract and accept them and we'll look at uh, what parliament assembly legally cannot do what Her Majesty's government legally cannot do, what the government must do, what the courts legally cannot do, and what the courts legally must do. And we'll very briefly talk about the Scottish claim of rights because that marginally differs a little bit and a lot of people ask me that. So first, it's a power sharing agreement uh, between the contracting parties and the way that it came about was that they removed the previous king, King James II. And the reason they did it, or the lawful excuse, or the cause of action, which are words that we've used so far, uh, was to vindicate and assert the ancient rights and liberties. <clears throat> so they assembled to ratify, confirm, and establish the said declaration and articles, clauses, matters, and things contained therein by the force of law, by their own authority as a legal entity. So the way that it came about was the, uh, the Lord's spiritual, Lord's temporal, and the commons, they claimed to be representing the people and what they did was they listed their grievances, i.e. the cause for action. And they offered this to the uh, Prince, of, Prince William of Orange and Mary. And the words within the contract are, do pray the said prince and princess to accept the same accordingly, making it very clear this is merely a common law contract. Upon the acceptance of the crown, uh, of the regal power, which, like I've said before, is also known as royal prerogative, and um, what happened was, on acceptance, it became the rights of all the people, not only of the subjects. So, any any rights claimed therein apply to all of the people, and it expresses very clearly. And let's just think back what we said about the lawful government to govern the people according to their respective laws and customs. What it says in the Bill of Rights is equivalent, and it says that no declarations, judgments, doings, or proceedings to the prejudice of the people in any of the said premises ought in any ways to be drawn hereafter into consequences. Now, what this affirms is that Acts of Parliament are merely administrative law to uphold the duties and obligations uh, of those who claim authority to govern. Further, it goes on on the acceptance of the Crown to reaffirm the true and ancient and indub indubitable rights and liberties of the people. This is very important because this puts it above the authority of those governing, and this is not up for debate. Anything that's in the Bill of Rights is beyond the authority of the government, beyond the authority of Parliament, and beyond the authority of the courts. And what that means is our ancient and indubitable rights and liberties 
are above those governed by the law. It further says, um, a judged, deemed, and taken to be. That says, no court can overrule this. It further says, to be firmly and strictly holden and observed as they are expressed in the said declaration, it cannot be altered. It continues, and observed and as expressed in the said declaration, and all officers and ministers whatsoever shall serve their majesties and their successors according to the same in all times to come, i.e. this cannot be changed and those governing today still are legally bound by the Bill of Rights. And in the Boris Johnson judgment in 2019 with prorogation, Boris Johnson himself relied upon the Bill of Rights. So therefore, this is still the source of authority and so accepted in the courts of law. Now, I've changed the rights into a different order as they, uh, from what they're listed. Um, and the reason is uh, so that um, I can talk about specifically what the government can or cannot do, what parliament can or cannot do, and the structure of how governance uh, occurs. We talked about this briefly um, in when we looked at lawful governments. Um, so, firstly, the important thing is who controls who? The government must uphold uh, the people's unalienable rights. And if we start with an explanation again, which I gave briefly in the lawful governance, in theory, we, the people, choose our representatives to go to Parliament who express our will through the, create, the creation of Acts of Parliament. And Her Majesty's government then is responsible to enforce the people's will. However, that does not occur. And the reason it does not occur lawfully is because we have first past the post system, which is not equal representation, we know. All are equal under the law. And secondly, they vote along party lines and have party whips and things like that, admitting it's not the people's will. So from the Bill of Rights, Her Majesty's government legally cannot. So these, it's not up for debate. They just cannot do this. Impose cruel or unusual punishment. That means no mental or physical coercion. They cannot demand excessive bail. No grants, promises, or fines or forfeitures can be demanded without conviction by trial by jury. This one goes back to people that uh, talk about Magna Carta. This actually is an ancient right which even predates Magna Carta. So no fines or forfeitures can be without trial by jury. Um, and the one that affirms that the government is subject to Parliament assembled is no dispensing and late dispensing of power, levying money and keeping standing armies can be done only with the consent of Parliament. So Her Majesty's government is Parliament assembled's servant, not the master of Parliament. <clears throat> um, so the individual alienable rights that uh, the government must uphold, i.e. for you and me, is the right to petition the monarch. Now, that's unrestricted. And so long as it's peaceful, uh, there's absolutely no lawful justification and no lawful authority to stop any form of petitioning the monarch. And that can be done through your local level, at your councillors, at your MPs, uh, at the press, at uh, Parliament itself, or 10 Downing Street. Nobody can stop you from petitioning how you, free, how you choose. The right to unrestricted freedom of speech, and we've talked about that in the first module, that, that there needs to be understood it's the expression of ideas 
that's what speech is about. So we can formulate and express ourselves clearly. It does not mean defamation, making false claims, making false statements. That's all fraudulent representation. And to lie is to go against the mind and therefore that's causing harm. We all have the right to bear suitable arms. And as all are equal under the law, uh, I'll let you uh, interpret that for yourself. But you need suitable arms to defend yourself because we cannot use them offensively. Then further, this really is also for the people and in theory, if the system was used correctly and we had representatives as opposed to politicians, frequent elections, free elections, and parliament must be able to sit frequently. And this is the interesting point, to redress all the people's grievances, affirming we are the ones Parliament is our represent, our MPs are our representatives, and they should be expressing our will, not a party, party political will, it's the people's will. Then the next uh, thing is uh, Her Majesty's courts legally cannot be based upon ecclesiastical beliefs, i.e. religious beliefs. Now, to put this into context, the understanding of this, if you're familiar with the King James Bible that was uh, published in 1611, I think it was off the top of my head, and it was the authorized version, and they were starting to use the church to enforce government policy. Um, and the people got fed up with it, and therefore this was one of the grievances they listed. Further, Her Majesty's courts must legally this is not uh, up for debate they must have trials by jury so all of this together affirms that legislation and we'll be talking about legislation and how to challenge claims of authority and um, is merely administrative law to deliver the governance of you and me according to our respective laws and customs. And this legally is affirmed by doing nothing to the prejudice of the people. So that's the Bill of Rights and why it's so important. I look at a constitution as the forming authority of the fiction. This is the constitution of the United Kingdom governance. And it cannot be a constitution for a country. Uh, because a country also merely is a fiction. Now, the bill of the claim of rights uh, is the Scottish equivalent to the English Bill of Rights, and uh, it follows exactly the same format. It follows the offer to contract with the King and Queen of England, because at that time, when the bill of claim of rights uh, was created, already William and Mary were the King and Queen of England. Same format that listed the grievances, and all of which are utterly and directly uh, contrary to the known laws, statutes, and freedoms of this realm, i.e., our ancient laws. Um, then it lists the rights, and it ends again with the same thing in the Bill of Rights that no declarations, doings, or proceedings to the prejudice of the people in any of the said premises ought in any ways to be drawn herein after in consequence or example. So, uh, and again, we know it's an offer to contract with the king and queen because again, it says they, um, they resolve that William and Mary King and Queen of England, France, and Ireland be and be declared King and Queen of Scotland to hold the crown and royal dignity of the kingdom, said Kingdom of Scotland. And they do pray the said King and Queen of England to accept the same accordingly. So exactly the same thing. It's an offer to contract, again, to uphold the people's natural inalienable rights. And it's very, very clear, nothing can be done to the prejudice of the people. The people being going back to the promise, our respective laws and customs. 
So I hope that's a, a quick summary, but I think it's very important that everybody reads the Bill of Rights um, because this year is the funda funda fundamental document which gives you your legal rights. Remember, lawful is the spoken word, legal is the written word. This year is your legal rights. And to reinforce it, Parliament cannot change this. Government cannot change this. And the courts cannot change this. They and that just bring, that, uh, that brings us back to everything about this basic training mark, doesn't it? Which is that for people to have the confidence in themselves and to understand that by knowing the basic rules of law uh, and how to understand equity, that you can simply with confidence do exactly the opposite to um, to stand up to what people have been getting away with for so long, those in power, is, is that because people don't understand their rights, is they've had no confidence to apply their rights. So Absolutely. this is hopefully what we're going to be, uh, uh, be achieving with these short videos. So that brings to conclusion our six part basic training. Uh, we'll now go on to record intermediate training and then advanced training for those needed uh, that want to join and work with us uh, in detail to get themselves to a uh, quite a, a superior level of knowledge, actually. Uh, we'll also now start putting together the role plays uh, along with some pre-recorded videos we've already made, uh, which will show people how uh, we put this training into, into real life out there. Absolutely. Mm. Good. Excellent, Mark. So I'll see you on the intermediate training, which will begin next week. Fantastic. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Mark. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.